Here we are at the Newport Historical Society. The date is May 25th, and I'm here with Mrs. Bullhouse, and we're about to talk about the uh, uh, neighborhood of Newport. Now, your neighborhood, of course, is the point. Well, I was born on Upper Thames Street, uh -huh. which now they, they say is part of the point, but in my childhood, oh, I, I don't think that we included up to Thames Street. Uh -huh. I mean, Cross Street would have been probably. I see. Cross Street probably would have been yeah. on the point, but... Mm -hmm. uh, but not that. Yeah. You see, I was born uh, in what is now one of the Dallas Duke houses, mm -hmm. almost up to Ellery Park on the, on the right-hand side going out. Yeah, okay. Uh huh. Yeah, I think I know where that is. People, so, people were born at home then. They weren't born yes, in the hospital. Uh -huh. So, you, it, that part of town then wasn't considered part of the point at well, that time? Well, of course, uh, we only, my father and mother only, I have no recollection mm -hmm. of that house. Yeah. They moved from there to Bridge Street, Upper Bridge Street, mm -hmm. and then uh, over, over on Poplar Street and so forth in various sections of what is really what yes. is the point. Uh -huh. But when I went to school, no, I don't think we considered that upper Tennessee yeah. Street as part of the point. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and where did you go to grade I school? I went to, uh, I started school at Calendar School, uh -huh. kindergarten, first, second, and third grades. Then we went to Potter School for the fourth through the seventh. And then to Mumford School, eighth and ninth. They had nine grades before you went to high school then. Uh -huh. And then, of course, uh, to Rogers for the four years. Yes. So during your um, well, grammar school days, I guess we'd say, you, you went uh, to were Mumford on the point. School. Yeah. It was oh. all on the point. There were right. all the neighborhood schools, and you went home for lunch mm -hmm. and back again. Yeah. And so then your friends at school were also your oh, your neighbors at home. You all you would get a few that, well, uh, say a calendar, you'd get a few from way up a third street. Mm -hmm. They didn't, I don't think they sent them to Cogsville then as they do now. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah. But no, otherwise, you played with the same people, you went to school with the same people. Uh -huh, yeah. And you stayed pretty much in your own neighborhood because right? uh, nobody had cars then and uh, very few people had a horse and wagon. My, my father drove a horse for the groceries that he worked for, but mm -hmm. never was used for the family at all. Right, right. So then, what, during your childhood, you uh, spent most of your, your leisure time, your right there, time on the point. On the point and down at the piers at the water's edge. Mm -hmm. Now, within the point, uh, were there certain sections where uh, children had most of their friends? Could you have friends that you would play with often throughout the entire area of the point? Well, you pretty much played with people who lived right around you because, uh, as I say, uh, people went to school with me who lived, well, say in your neighborhood, Sunshine Court, right. but they wouldn't be people I would play with okay. ordinarily. It would be mostly Poplar, Elm, Third, Willow, right around that section, which is where, when I was growing up, I lived on Papa Street, you know the little house that they've now restored right next to St. John's Parish House? Ye uh, yes. It sits N2 in the, in the yard, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yes. Well, of course, I, I lived there. With my, well, I lived on Bridge Street till I was four. Uh -huh. And my mother had scarlet fever and diphtheria together. Uh -huh. And me, my father and I had to go and stay with my grandmother on Third Street. Mm -hmm which is just across from where John West lived, you know what I'm yes. about. So that was my grandmother's house. So just in that hey. couple of blocks, really, uh, yeah. in the neighborhood, it was really the most the people you played with. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a sense now, of course, of the different neighborhoods of Newport and different, some people feel that they have certain uh, stereotype views of people who live on the point or people who live in the fifth ward. Was there any sort of uh, stereotypical view within the point? Like if you lived on Poplar Street, was there any sense of the people who lived on Van Zant as being some other way than you? No, I don't think so. But they weren't people that, I 
don't say they weren't people you didn't know, yeah. because of course, like your your parents had grown up with other people that they visited, but ordinarily, you you visited your relatives who didn't live on the point, uh, on are people just pretty close, right. you know, right. and. Uh, because Saturday night was the night for shopping downtown. You went down Thames Street. Oh, is that right? The big stores. Yeah. Not grocery stores, I don't mm -hmm. mean, but the clothing stores, the toy stores, that kind of thing were all open. Saturday night was the night. Mm -hmm. the people, well, most people, I think, got paid on Saturday rather than, it seems mm -hmm. to me now a lot of people get paid on Thursday. Yes. But then Saturday was the end of the week. You were. Uh, if you didn't do much, my, because my grandmother, my grandfather was a Baptist minister, so not much cooking was done on Sunday. The cooking was done for the Sunday dinner on oh. Saturday, and it was usually served cold. That is, it would be cold, spicy, mm -hmm. oh, that's interesting. that kind of thing. Uh -huh. Because um, Sunday, you definitely didn't do too much. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You mentioned that you uh, played down on the piers. Well, because down the down Poplar Street or down when I when I was about nine we moved to the house on the corner of Third and Elm, right across from the print shop. Yes. You know. We lived in we lived in old houses all the time, but it wasn't a static symbol then. <laughs> Everybody lived in that old house. Uh -huh. But then you went down the Elm Street there uh -huh. to go swimming. And that was a, a favorite activity of the children? Oh yes, then everybody went went bathing and uh -huh. down there. Did you ever go to um, Blue Rocks? Oh, well, we went to Blue Rocks uh, for, um, they had band concerts. Uh, in the summer, there were band concerts at the Blue Rocks, or Battery Park, as we called it, and the Tour Park, and the, the square, there were bandstands in all of these. Oh. And then one way down in King Park. But um, I would get, this would be when you were 12, 14, on your own, in a sense, yeah. uh, would get as far as maybe the one on the square, and of course the, the battery park mm -hmm. one, but, but not to the others. Right. And, but this was a thing that they had them twice a week, and the battery park ones were lovely because we were right on the water, and you'd see the Fall River Line boat coming down with oh, all the lights yes. flashing, uh -huh. and then of course in the middle of summer, there'd be the Navy boats, and they would send out their searchlights and all that kind of thing. Uh -huh. Oh, that must have been fun. And, and there was a little, you know, as you go down Battery Park, as you go down towards the, to go down on the water side, there was a little stand there where they had popcorn and peanuts. And that kind oh, of thing. uh huh. So the band concerts then oh, were they, popular activities. Yes, people didn't have radios or televisions or anything like that. Had phonographs, you know, with the big bells. Yes. But um, that was summer night, and you, everybody walked up and down. Everybody walked. Of course, there were no, nobody had hardly. There might be cars for businesses, but people. Mm -hmm. So it was. Um, they would start maybe by half past seven, and people would start walking up, and the pack would be just jammed with people, and they'd keep milling around. And, uh -huh. and it was a really a pretty sight up there with the, yeah. uh, the water. Especially with the water. water. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. And now the one down at King Park probably was too, but I never got that <laughs> far. Uh, you mentioned people walking. Uh, was that a uh, another evening pastime, say, to get out and take some air, so to speak? Well, for that kind of thing, for everybody on the point, I think, went that could went to the band concerts. Mm -hmm. yeah. And of course, there were there were benches up up near the street, and of course, around the circle, there were still benches. Yes. There. So, and then people would can bring a little chair to sit on, and and as I say, Mr. Child had this little stand there where we sold sold her and not buy the small bottles and all the dead can and things yeah. there. Do you remember anything about the pulling boat races? Well I'm afraid I I think that men folks get more into races. I uh -huh. don't really uh -huh. remember much about the races. Oh, okay. As Mr. Limmer mentioned he had quite a lot to say about Yeah, well because Mr. Limmer lived on Elm Street when he was growing up, but of course he as I say the boys were more interested yeah. in the boats and the that kind of thing. I don't remember yeah. too much about that. Mm -hmm. 
Um, did you receive any uh, educational training at home other than what you what you received in school? No, to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're in. Uh, you mentioned that your father uh, worked for a grocery store. He yeah. was a, a he delivered groceries. Did he? Yeah. Oh yes. He had to get up. Because I told you it was a horse and a small wagon. I forgot what you call that. It was just a white wagon. Nobody had telephones. He had to get up and go take care of the horse, feed it, hitch it up and go. The store was on the corner of 3rd and Poplar. It made it into apartments. Yes, I think I know the building. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he would go, have to get the horse ready, as I say, groom him and take him up. Then he went all through the point, like your section, wherever there were, nobody had telephones. Mm -hmm. So we went and got their order. Then he came back to the shop, put the order in a basket, and then he delivered the order. Mm. You don't get that kind of service. <laughs> no. Now where was the horse kept? Well, the owner of the shop, who was Mr. Hamilton, uh, lived on well, you know where the Doris Duke house is now on Bridge Street that's just beyond the railroad track before you get to the... It's kind of changed now, but it oh. was if Bridge Street, but, mm -hmm. you know, right across yeah. now, the America's Cup has changed it. Right. But Mr. Hamilton lived in the shop in in the house, which now is a Doris Duke house. Yes, I know which one. And in the back was the state. Oh, and I that see. was where the horse was, see. which is just a block or so away. We were then living or when I remembered the most, we lived either on Poplar Street or, as I say, when I, when I was nine, we moved to the corner of Third and Elm and lived there until, I guess, I was 20-something. Mm -hmm. So that my real recollections are of that period. Yes, yes. Um, did you ever go with your father during the summer, did I say? No, oh, no, no. That was strictly a business day. Yeah. I didn't know but what maybe you rode in the wagon. No, I don't think I ever rode in that wagon in my uh, life. That was strictly went for that. And, but uh, I've so often thought how much service they got then that they don't get now. Yes, well, I... Uh, but people bought then practically by the day. Yes. They didn't dry in big... They might, might in the fall, some people buy a whole bar barrel of flour or a thing of sugar. But ordinarily, it was just a day-by-day transaction, so we went to those people, and they gave them their order. Now, was there a, a regular list of people whom he contacted? These, yes, these were customers of oh, that. So I, don't, he, I don't mean that he, can't, he went to everybody on the point. No, right. these were people, and most of them had a little little bit of a notebook in which mm -hmm. this was written down and then paid at the end of the week. Right. So he wasn't responsible then for, for soliciting these. Oh, no, no, no. He no, just went these, to a specific he, list of customers. These went to specific customers, uh -huh. and I, I may be wrong. Maybe he went to this one one day and again on Wednesday or Thursday, that kind of thing. Yes. And as I say, they had those small baskets, and they would come mm -hmm. back and, and weigh out whatever it was they wanted and fill the basket, and then he'd go off and deliver it all. And of course, he worked till 6 o'clock at night, and then Saturdays they worked till 12. Mm -hmm. At night. Oh. I mean, there was no clothes at noon on Saturdays. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's right. You said yeah. that story. Mm -hmm. huh. uh, yes, I know that uh, many businesses, many more businesses, uh, had delivery service yeah. than certainly do now. But you see, nobody, nobody in the homes had telephones, so they didn't telephone in their order. They had to go and get the order. Right. Right. And of course, I don't. If a child, if they, I don't mean that every customer got to live it that way. Mm -hmm. Children had to go and do the errands back and forth a good many times. Yes. And did you, did oh, yes. you do such things? To, oh yes. See, I only lived a block away. Mm -hmm. He never delivered to my house. I went yes. down because I don't say he may have brought bigger things home when we needed them. But I, the thing that fascinated me, uh, Mr. Hamilton, the owner of the store, you'd get milk in a tin bucket. Mm -hmm. so like I mean, a tin pail yes. about mm -hmm. this big around with a, what do they call that, a bale handle? Yes. And he fascinated me. He put the milk in and then he go <laughs> like this, and the milk didn't come out. Spin, he'd spin the bucket around. He'd spin it around. Oh, well, I, me, I could not understand how that happened. <laughs> I've seen that sort yes. of thing. It is yes. amazing. Yes. <laughs> 
uh, there were many more stores on oh, the yes. point. Oh, yes, of certain... course that they closed. They were all these little neighborhood stores. Uh, up near you, uh, Tripp's had one up on 3rd Street. You know where Jimmy Douglas lives? Yes. Well, his grandfather, well, maybe it's his great-grandfather, I'm not sure. Well, Tripp had a shop right on the, on the street, right in front of his, mm -hmm. what he calls his, well, he doesn't call him the partner, but anyhow. Yeah. It, he, that was a store, a neighborhood store. Then over on 2nd Street, where Mary's Oil Company mm -hmm. is, Jessen's had a big store. Now, did people tend to uh, patronize the store, uh, stores in their immediate vicinity? I think so. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. And as I say, most of them, uh, my recollection would be that most of them didn't pay cash, paid at the end of the week. So they, they had a charge account at a specific store. I see. Yes. Yes. And were most of the little stores on the point were the grocery stores? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there were, were other businesses as well? Well, of course. Well, as you know, the old colony thing, but the big business. Oh, uh, the, the railway. The yeah. railroad yes. thing. A great many of the people, the fathers, people who lived on the point, worked in some capacity for mm -hmm. those uh, shops. Yeah. You know, there was, there was um, they did all kinds of things from upholstering to repairing mm -hmm. ships. And all. Yes, well, I was just talking to yeah. Mr. Yeah. Uh, Barry. Yeah. He, and as I uh, say, many of, many of the Many of the people, especially on Lower Washington Street and um, and the lower end, of Bridge, the water's end, of Bridge Street, there was a big grocery store right there where Dallas Duke put that. Is that the Lopez house there? At on the the corner of Bridge and Washington. Yeah, there was a big one there that was run by Mr. Sinclair. Mm -hmm. It was a big. Now I don't think I ever went to that shop. I went across where my father was, down on the corner of Bridge and Third. There was also a grocery store there, mm -hmm. across, across the street was West Stalls Ice Cream Store, where the rum line is now. Oh. People came from all over the town for West Stalls Ice Cream. Oh, really? Hmm. Um, do you remember, well, or do you know, I should say, uh, when your family came to the point? My family, as far as I know, lived at the point way back. Uh -huh. My, uh, my Captain John Cobb was in the revolution with Doug. Lower Washington Street. Mm -hmm. Of course, Caleb, uh, my first car ancestor of mine, his property was on Mill Street and they ran the ferry. Mm -hmm. But uh, for many generations they've lived on the port. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, did you, did your family attend church regularly? Oh, yes. Um, as I said, my grandfather was a Baptist minister. Right. But my mother's people came from England, so I was brought up at Trinity. Oh, I see. I see. Was uh, church attendance routine for uh, for your friends? Oh, I think they all went went somewhere or another. Uh -huh. You know. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Was there any religious training at home that you received? Other than I was brought up in the church and went to Sunday school, was baptized and confirmed and so forth, and married at Trinity. But then, of course, when I, when I was married, my husband came, uh, he, was, he was, came in the Navy, and he had been brought up in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as you know, we're right in the back of the Methodist Church, where I live. Oh, yes, where you live now, yeah. yes. Well, of course, we were living there about two years before I was married. Oh, I see. And, uh, so when it came time to get married, no, we got married at Trinity Church, and that's where I went. We got married at Cape Chapel, actually. But then when the children came, it was much easier to send them right around to the Methodist Church. And so then they asked us if we wouldn't be interested in going. So Peter sent out South Dakota for his letter, which came back. I sent to Trinity Church, they don't give you another day. They take you off the record. Give you a <laughs> so we've gone to Methodist Church ever since because the children were brought up there and I've been on the, the board and the secretary of Methodist Church for years. Mm -hmm. uh, were you aware of the uh, differences in religion when you were a child uh, in your, your no, playmates? No, of course they, you know, there was quite a, 
as, as there still is, of course, a good many Catholic families. And the only recollection I have of that is the fact that, you know, uh, before they changed, well, Thursday was Thanksgiving, they couldn't eat turkey on Friday. Oh, yes. And that has been since changed, yes. but at that time, you know, it was very different that you had only fish on Friday. Uh, now, how were Sundays in your home? Sundays were very quiet days, I'd say, because uh, my grandfather wouldn't even allow it in his house, wouldn't even allow a Sunday paper. He was very strict on all kinds of things. When he died, they found, you know, when you're not allowed to do something, that's the thing you like. <laughs> yes. All of his children, then my father was one of seven children, and they were all crazy to play cards. Mm -hmm. And my grandfather was a Baptist, and, you know, found yes. on that. So when my grandfather died, they found all these packages of cards that he had taken. Am I not? Yeah, it's still going. Mm -hmm. He had taken from them. He wouldn't destroy them because they weren't his, but if they were, he'd taken them away. And you know, my father and mother went to dance school after they were married because uh, Baptists just didn't do those things. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now, do you suppose that was that your Sunday routine, say, was more strict because your grandfather was a minister? Well, I suppose so, but I, I think, no, I think Sundays were pretty quiet days. Mm -hmm. And that was true for I think most it was true for most anybody. You, you know, yes, you were allowed to go out and play around a little, but I mean, there was no, well, of course, they didn't have the kind of recreation things we have now. Were you aware of any uh, ministers or rabbis or priests that lived in your neighborhood? Not when I was a child, no. Excuse me, so how somebody couldn't wait. Oh, uh, were you aware of any uh, priests or ministers or rabbis in your neighborhood? Well, of course, the, um, the ministers, the rectors, uh, they call them the St. John's Church, of course, lived over there then, uh, yes. just as they do now, as, mm -hmm. as Father Dunbar does now. And we were, that little house, as I say, that I lived until I was nine, mm -hmm. was of course right next to St. John's. Yes, yes. And they lived in the corn, in mm -hmm. the rectory. Uh, when you were a child, were you, uh, well, did, did you look up to these men as I don't know the community. I, I don't think that we ever, you know, they didn't. Uh, they didn't affect my life. Let's <laughs> put it that way. Uh -huh. I went to the Episcopal Church, but I went to Trinity. Yes. Even though St. John's was Episcopal, St. John's has always been a, a high Episcopal. Yes, as, as opposed, and Trinity was not. A Trinity is is fairly low. Mm -hmm. It's Episcopal, but it doesn't have. St. John's has mass and. They have confession. I don't know if they do now or not. But that kind of thing. Yes, yes, I see. You were born at home, you said. Oh, yes. I was, was born in the, that house. Custom? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. They had a, uh, well, I guess you'd say a midwife came in. Now uh, trained nurse. Yes. And now, a doctor. I was told by uh, another lady. Uh, who's, I don't know, 70, 75 perhaps now, when she was having her children, after the child was born, um, then she and the baby would go to a, a boarding house so that, so that the lady could rest and not need to take care of the other children and whatnot. Is that... Well, uh, all, my children, all my own children were born in the hospital. No, okay. I had nothing left like that. Yeah. But at the time I was born, as I say, I don't think any children were born in the hospital unless the mother had developed something that happened. I don't, you know, everybody was born at home, and of course there was a doctor, but it, the, uh, as a matter of fact, you remember, you know, Mrs. Ward over on the corner of Washington Street? Do you know yeah. why we needed to go off with her name, Ward, last name, Ward? I, the name is familiar, I believe. It's right, right across from Madame of Ward's. Isn't that? No, that's that's the old lady's home. She's right in the corner of Chestnut. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, her grandmother, Mrs. Bell, was the one who was who took care of my mother and oh, I uh -huh. when I was small. Uh -huh. And my father said that they thought I wasn't living 
and she, wow. she worked over me too. She brought oh, me too, and uh, gave me my first piece of money because at that time babies had bands, mm -hmm. and uh, she put water in the band where the navel was <laughs> to hold it back. Huh. Um, now, how long would she have, I or how many days after you were actually born, would she come and, and uh, be of any help I after was, that? I'm, I'm, I imagine she came back and forth, but I don't, I couldn't tell you about that. Mm -hmm. Perhaps it might be that somebody in the family came to help, too. I, I see. Know. I see. I'm afraid I was too small to know, and I never asked yeah. that question. <laughs> um, now, were you... Uh, if you if you were the oldest child, then you I were was the only child. Oh, okay. Well, I was about to wonder if you had any experience no, no. with any of your I was an only child. Born. And when I my see. first my first child was born, he only weighed five pounds, mm -hmm. and I thought he'd break. I'd never been near him, never oh, had access to yeah. a small baby like that. I see. Uh, I wonder if um, we can talk for a minute, I guess, about uh, family life, family activities and whatnot. Uh, do you have any recollections of uh, various family activities that families today might not, uh, might not do? Well, as I say, my mother and father, the, the, one of the recreations of people and at their age, I think my mother was about 24 when I was born, my father maybe 28. But they when they played cards. This was a thing, and they went to like the outdoors hall one night a week or one night a month, whatever. And they had these whist parties. So uh, they didn't have babysitters. I can remember going and sitting with a book and sitting there because the thing would be over by ten o'clock at night, you know. But the, this was the kind of the uh, the kind of recreation. This was. People and of course, uh, card parties. If they have them nowadays, people go and they sit at one table. Four people go and sit, but then the person who won in one table went on to the next, so that everybody met and, and oh, played see. with everybody else, and it was much. Yes, sir. Excuse me, can I? The machine is going. Can I? Break? The uh, card parties now were they a, a public event? Oh or? yes, anybody okay. could go. But uh -huh. what I'm saying is they were much more. What's the word I want to use? That people intermix much more because, yes. as I say, if you won, the, the couple who won at this table went on to the next one, and uh -huh. so forth. So that everybody practically played with everybody else uh -huh. before the evening was over, and then there'd be some yeah. kind of a little prize. And uh, refreshment set. Uh -huh. You mentioned that uh, that there weren't babysitters. Now, did you mean that uh, it was uncommon for? I don't think people ever thought of hiring somebody for a right? babysitter, because they didn't go out that much. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was I saying? My own family, my own, I was the only child. Of course, in families that have big families, the older ones would look after yes. the younger ones. But I don't think people went out mm -hmm. as much to, to leave children, and certainly the mother was always home all day. Yes, and so your mother then did, did not work? Oh no, my mother never worked in the uh -huh. life of that. But, well, I think before she was married, maybe, her, her, her brother, her, they had had some kind of a, her father and mother had had what we would now call an antique shop. My grandfather, they came from England, mm -hmm. and he mended China also. Oh. And um, I think they, she may have been in the shop before she was married, I'm not sure. Although her mother and father had died, yeah. and so it wouldn't have been for too long. But um, she never worked mm -hmm. in any Were you aware of, of the, any of your friends' mothers who were? I don't know of any of my friends' mothers that worked. They so were it certainly would have been an uncommon occurrence. It would have been, unless of course there was someone whose father had died or yes. something like that. But in my own neighborhood, in my, the people I grew up with, I don't know of anybody that the, mm -hmm. the mother wasn't right there at home. Mm -hmm. um, were there any uh, evening time activities for children, now this would be when you were perhaps 12 or 14 years old. Well, there could old, be things say. at the at the church. There mm -hmm. would be little plays, perhaps, and different um, festivities at the church and that kind of thing. 
and of course uh, St. John had things in the guild hall at various times. For the neighborhood children? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had a sewing school I know at one time. Saturday afternoon the sewing school thing. Mm -hmm. Mostly for their own children, but I think others could go. Yeah. Um, you moved around a lot. Now, did you rent the houses? Or oh, did yes. You own my father never owned a house. Uh -huh. And was that uh, common? Well, that was common. Most everybody just rented at that time. Oh, I see. Because my grandfather and grandmother, they owned their house because her father had, had bought it for her. Mm -hmm. She had, as I said, seven children. Mm -hmm. But... Um, Did you have many of your uh, relatives live nearby? No, except for my grandmother, as I say. Some of my relatives lived out in Middletown. They would come in on a Saturday night. Yeah. And um, of course, there was a good many things back and forth between, between the family. You'd have family parties and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the Saturday night downtown, was that, do you think that there was an opportunity for children to, uh, well, I don't know, see other children from other neighborhoods? Was that, well, I don't think that so. wasn't you, a part of Saturday no, night? No, that wasn't a Saturday night. You went downtown, but, uh, and as I said, of course, when you get 14, 15, 16, so forth, you went downtown on your own yeah. and had an ice cream soda box at, at the drugstore up there. And of course, uh, the big colonial theater opened, which was right about it's very hard to describe things on Thames Street since yes. America's Cup went through. Yeah. But as you went down Thames Street, of course, Thames Street was narrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, on one side would be the 5 and 10, which was Woolworths. And uh, then there was Landa's Toy Store. And the Boston Store was a big uh, department wow. store. And uh, the, you know, about, I guess, 1910, then somewhere there, the Colonial Theatre opened, which was a movie theatre. Mm -hmm. And down, a little farther down, was the Bijou Theatre. And of course, the very first movie theatre they had in town was called The Star, and was up about where uh, 7th Avenue is now, that building, you know what I mean? Oh, yes. That whole yes. store. Mm -hmm. was, uh, that's a very old building. They did it over a couple yes, of years I, ago, uh, and you saw the big Boards yeah, oh, I knew that. I know that's yeah. all good. Yeah. And of course, the Opera House, at one period when I was I 10, 12, maybe, they had a series of, of um, they had a, a staff company that stayed here and put on plays. Mm -hmm. And did you see any of those? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. We used to go Saturday afternoons. Uh -huh. And some, some of the people lived um, in the Plymouth House. You know where they moved that little house up on the corner of Fairwell Street, the little yes. house? Well, there was a hotel, rooming house place, it was called the Plymouth House, set there, a uh -huh. four story place. And uh, they, they, stayed, they lived right here, the stock company, and there were, there were children about my age that went to school mm -hmm. and were in some of the place sometimes, like Mrs. Wins the Cabbage Patch and that kind of thing. <laughs> um. Well, you sound as though you remember Saturday night uh, fondly. Oh yes, that was well. That was really the big night of the week that you went out. You uh -huh. know, otherwise you sat on your front steps. If you didn't have, this is I'm saying summertime. Yes. The like even my mother-in-law, they would come down. The neighbors would come down, and sit on the front steps, and talk back and forth. Mm -hmm. So there was there was uh, oh there was quite a, a lot of oh uh, yes there was neighborly 
feeling. And it, but as I say, you, you, these people would come out and then the children would play around. Mm -hmm. I, and, uh, I can remember the, the electric, uh, the lights, say, at the corner of Third and Papa, and they, they had those, I don't know what you call those things that they put in, they were, they were made like black. You mean the, the traffic lights, you mean? No, 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 the they weren't traffic. We didn't have the traffic. No, these were the lights that lit the street. Street lights, yeah. And they had a... Uh, oh, a shield. No, they had a black thing, a, a thing that went in, a carbon thing that burned in there. Oh, yeah. And when they take it out, then we'd get pieces of that and make um, oh. make uh, things on the sidewalk where you played hopscotch and that kind of thing. <laughs> I was just thinking of a photo that I had seen of, well, I don't remember what year the photo was taken, but there were traffic lights at the corner of uh, Poplar and 3rd Street. Yeah, but this is much later than what I'm saying mm -hmm. about. Okay. We had, we, they, they were, the, there was a street light. Yeah, I understand, yeah, I understand. Incandescent light, did they call them? I yes, think so. I think so. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they, they had these carbon things that were put in. The, the filaments, probably. Film, but it, was, it came out like a black, like a, almost like a fat pencil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course, you could you could write on the sidewalk with yes. those kind of things. Uh -huh. That must have been fun. Yeah. And you you play, you see, underneath that, underneath that light at night, it's the way you play. Now, there must have been one also. My recollection is that there was probably one at the corner of second and Elm, because I can remember being under a light there. Mm -hmm. Because these gas lights we have are, are later. They were yes. put up. There were gas lights earlier, but the ones that we have now were put in not too long During ago. Just a few years ago. Yeah, just yeah. a few years ago. But of course, there, there were, uh, were gas lights around. There was one over when we lived where I'm living now, right where you went up River Lane, right mm -hmm. by the police station. There yes. was one there. Mm -hmm. um, so, is it fair to say that uh, evenings activities often centered around in the summertime, particularly? Yeah, yeah. Uh, around those corners, uh -huh. and then, then they'd the play little lee stalks and all this kind of thing where you went and hid, and you know, and this would be boys and girls together, mm -hmm. and uh, they'd hide in the backyards and all of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, how late usually were you allowed oh, to stay no, out? Oh, no, you weren't allowed out after half past eight, nine o'clock at the most because we didn't have daylight saving time then, so mm -hmm. it was dark earlier than it is now. That's right, yes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you weren't allowed out much after dark. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you were right, practically, where your, your parents or the neighbors could see you, you see. Right. And uh, so, you did, so you did then play just generally. Uh, right in the neighborhood, right, uh -huh. yes. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any uh, particular recollections of uh, some instance where, uh, in which neighbors would help one another, if there were any particular times? Well, of course, my grandmother was noted for going out and laying out the dead, and, and of course they would they would go and I can't say any specific things, mm -hmm. but I think they would go and help when somebody was sick, and of course if somebody died, then everybody took something because there'd be, there'd be food after the funeral, so yes. the neighbors would all take in, in something or other. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and is it, is it fair to say, do you think, that perhaps neighbors uh, at that time when you were a child were, uh, knew each other better or, or perhaps were more, fr uh, more friendly or better friends, so to speak, with the, the, their group of neighbors uh, than perhaps Say today? Oh, I'm sure they are. You know that apartment house next door to me? I have no idea who lives in there, but mm -hmm. in and out they, they come, you know, yeah. mostly, well, I guess, down. I mean, up over the water's edge. Yes, yes. And this, you know, I don't know how many neighbors, how many apartments they have now. Mm -hmm. But they're there, I, you see them, and they're gone. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know who, who, you know, this neighbor watch, the point yeah. association. You couldn't in my neighborhood. I wouldn't know who belonged there and who didn't belong there. Yeah. But that was, was that the case then when you well, were a child? Well, when we were a child, people lived in the same house. You say I moved around. Well, yes, we moved around, but it was a question of maybe, I, we lived on Upper Tenth Street. 
and then went to Bird Street. I think that, I don't know, they didn't live there very long. On 10th Street, we left there when I was four because of my mother's sickness, and uh, she was quite uh, from that double pneumonia. Mm -hmm. uh, she wasn't able to do things for a while, so we went out to Powell Avenue and lived with my mother's aunt, boarded with her for a while. Mm -hmm. Then we went over on Papa Street, and we were there, say, 10 or 12 years. Then we went down um, to the corner of Third and Elm, and we must have been there 10 more. Mm -hmm. See, then we came over where we are now, and I've been there about 56. <laughs> but I own it now, but my father never owned it. Right, right. Were you aware of many uh, single people? living in your neighborhood? Well, of course I had some, I had some great aunts on Washington Street, little maiden ladies, that can just, one, one more of one chew and the mother of one and a half, so you know how big they were. <laughs> <laughs> they must have been small. Yeah, they were tiny. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were, of course, there were guests, there were maiden people living around, but mostly it was families, and of course, uh, as I say, I was an only child, but of course there were there were big families too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, did you, well, your family, say, have uh, uh, many gatherings or parties or events or whatnot well, inside the home? Well, as I say, my aunt who lived in the middle town, and she had seven, and they put them on, <laughs> Uncle Steve would put them in the milk wagon, and they'd come in for Saturday night supper. And, and stay for the evening, and then I guess the old horse would practically take them home on his <laughs> own. The kids would all be asleep by that time. Yes, they, they of course, there were various uh, family, family affairs. I can remember Decoration Day, was a, which is coming up now, and you don't hear about Decoration Day anymore. But everybody went to the cemetery and put lilacs and so forth, and then coming back to my grandmother's on Third Street there, and, and uh, my cousins and I would, would be there mm -hmm. those kind of days. Yeah. Uh, lilacs? Was that a traditional Oh, lilacs. Everybody, lilacs were done. And, um, well, you see, it's a flower. It's, it's out just about the right time, and nearly yeah. everybody. I mean, people didn't buy flowers, let me put it that way. I see. And it would be lilacs, uh, and what was in bloom, and lilacs was usually the thing that was in bloom at Decoration Day. I see. You mentioned that your grandmother, I think, <clears throat> laid out the dead. As oh yes, said. yes, she'd go and lay out the dead, and and go help when the babies were coming and so forth. She papered papered ceilings. I papered rooms, but I never finished to tie ceilings. <laughs> was it? And were the um, the funerals or the uh, services it, more often in people's homes? Oh yes, mm -hmm. I can remember my when my I guess it was my. First one I remember is my grandfather's funeral. And the the um, coffin was in the pile, mm -hmm. and we sat upstairs, and the minister stood in the hall and said, and then they'd go with all the carriages to the mm -hmm. cemetery. And so that was the, the custom in that day. Yeah, that and then they would all go back to the house, as I say, mm -hmm. because they came from. They from Wakefield, from the from middle town, and so forth. So there'd always be food. This is my own family. Yes. Saying uh, there'd be food mm -hmm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. hmm. um, you mentioned there weren't as many activities for families. Say people didn't go out as often. No. And what? And but what activities did take place? It, did it most often occur? In someone's home, in the home, say? Oh, yes, yes uh -huh. I think so. Yeah. How about the uh, the physical aspect of the point? Uh, well, was it very different than? Not, no, but the point is much improved. I mean, of course, so many people have done over houses now. Uh, Papa Street, particularly from the railroad track, going up that section has improved, because this house has been moved in there now, yeah. too. But, uh, it seems to me that the point is 
is much improved because people, well, people like the old houses and they've restored them. Yeah, yeah. As I say, when I was a child, everybody lived in the old house. But yeah. I was nine, they had our houses over there. Oh, is that right? Oh. Um, Third Street now yes. has very few trees. Did it have more when no, you were a child? No, I don't think Third Street oh. ever had trees. No. By now. Because I noticed that well, Washington maybe Street. down down near a. I I've seen pictures, but nearly not in my recollection uh -huh. of trees down the, the down lower Third Street. But no, I don't think there were too many trees on Third Street no. because Washington Street all. Yeah, it still does yeah. that way. Yeah. You see Washington Street, as, as you look at a lot of the places, are still, I mean now, like Fishy Benson's house belonged to her father, mm -hmm. and then the Robinson house belonged in the same family because it belonged in the same family back before the Revolution. Yeah. Well, I mean, and of course, Colville's lived mm -hmm. in the other house. But, so the, a lot of the people where McLeod says they lived there when I was a child too. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the same people, even, right. you know. Right. Not all of them, but a good many of them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, I wonder then if the overall population of the point, say, was greater when you were a child because perhaps there were more well, units point. per house. Uh, well, yes, because you building. see now you take Lower Washington Street. There were, there were houses all along there that were taken down. Uh, I don't know just when they were taken down, but there were big houses that had been big, big colonial houses, but then it had been made into all yeah. kinds of apartments. Yeah. Uh, tenements, they called them, not apartments. Uh, they, were called, they were called tenements, tenements then? Yeah. Do you remember uh, Marsh Street? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, do you remember that it had houses on the other side, as it does not now. Uh, yes, I think it had houses on both sides before they cut. Right. Yeah, yeah. Was there a uh, a person in your in the neighborhood who was recognized as a, an important person or a uh, a leader or someone who was especially helpful, something like that? Well, I can't remember that. No, mm -hmm. because I say people on Washington Street like. Miss Smith, who would be Fishy Benson's aunt, great aunt. Uh, I can remember her. She had very white hair and she had a bicycle because by that time the women weren't riding bicycles. Mm -hmm. But when my father and mother were, well, before they were married, when they were first married, was the period when the bicycle first came in and uh, they had bicycle clubs. Mm -hmm. and my father tells about they would go here, like to Boston, and I guess out around Turkey Hill, and all was terrible. But that's one thing automobiles have done; the roads have been improved, you know. But these bicycle clubs were—they were very active, and they—they—they they, uh, they had the tandems, the bicycle yeah. built for two, and they would—they would go on these trips and then and have refreshments and all that thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That sounds like fun. Yeah. You mentioned the guild hall once before. Yeah. Uh, the guild did you hall. participate in any of the activities? To well, as I say most of them were for their own. I remember that. Yeah. I remember being much upset because they had this sewing class, and they were making stuffed wooden balls. And I went a couple of Saturdays, and then they decided, no, it was just for children, because oh. I lived right next door. So I was quite upset about that. Remember that. Things that you remember are strange, but something that affects you like that, you remember. Yes, yes. Did you have any record, well, I should say, any sense when you were a child of the relative importance of the point within the, the city as a whole or its, its place within the city? No, except that, you know, you know that thing my father always used to say uptown gentlemen, downtown brats, over the point hummus and long walk raps. <laughs> <laughs> that would probably give some sense of oh, relative well, importance. Each, 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 according to him, each section, you know, everybody said, oh, the point hummers, and I've never yet found what a point hummer is, but I'm a point hummer, I yes. think, you know. But the others, of course, they would say downtown gentlemen and uptown brats. 
swayed around. You know? I see. I see. Uh -huh. Well, I think that that. that I think that ought to do for today. Don't yeah. you think so? Mm -hmm. This is the second interview with Mrs. Bullhouse here at the uh, Newport Historical Society, and uh, this time we'll be talking about the, the various topics. Uh, well, the first one on the list is World War I. Well, World War I was a grand time to be just 18 and 19, <laughs> as far as Newport was concerned, uh -huh. because all the uh, young college men, they, they came rushing down. It wasn't a question like the Vietnam going against it. They couldn't get in fast enough. Mm -hmm. And of course, the uh, government hadn't set up places for them. So like the uh, Masonic Hall, all kinds of places were used as quarters until they could find places to put them. Mm. Were they also housed with families in the area? Uh, I think not. I think they found them, put them in like in churches, or places where there's more halls, mm -hmm. more bigger places, and then of course they built barracks that are where the, the northern part of where the naval hospital grounds are, because they built over it oh, now, yes. but out, they built wooden barracks out there. Well, there them. are a few wooden buildings remaining. With yeah, but these were, these were small were barracks. I think they all went eventually. Oh, I see, I see. So then this was um, one of the main points in the area for induction. And oh yes, they all came, came rushing in wanting to enlist and mm -hmm. they had to, uh, as I told you, I went, <laughs> I got out of school in June and I went into the Navy in September. This was, this was of course 1918 mm -hmm. and, and of course in November the war was over. <laughs> but this, I'm saying, the early, you know, yes. when they first came, the place was and of course there was all kinds of things carried on to try to do recreation for these people mm -hmm. while they were, were here. Mm -hmm. Dances and, and all that kind of thing. And that was, some of those things were sponsored by the community rather yes, than the Navy? Yes, rather than the Navy. Oh yes, this was the community. Yeah. Thing. Uh -huh. Now, um, were there, uh, well, what you might call advanced uh, things done before the actual entry of the United States into the war, things in anticipation well, to get ready I'm saying, for the influx? It doesn't influx? seem to me that there had been too mm -hmm. much because this, this just was this deluge of people, of course they couldn't have, they couldn't have known that these, all these boys in school would immediately try to leave their school, some, mm -hmm. some in their second year, some in their third year in college, you know. To, to get into the service, so that this was a big rush right after after the war was declared. So it was a, a sudden, a sudden uh, impact, then and the town was just throbbing with them. Oh, is that right? Hmm. Well, um, a little bit earlier then, when I got uh, 1916, uh, that was before this time. Yeah. And you didn't notice then in 1916 well, any 1916, particular... 1916, when you're 16 and you're in high school, the political things just go right over your head. Okay, I understand. Was there any uh, immediate impact on your family of the war here in Newport? No, because I, I of course, was only 16, I was an only child, I had no brother to go, and my father was, was too old to mm -hmm. come. I see. I see. Did your family uh, participate in any way in any of the well, the recreational activities or the planning no, or whatnot no, for no, these? I, uh, don't, I don't think so. Seas? I can't remember that they did. Uh -huh. Well, you were in the Navy then during the war for just a, a well, few just months. Just a couple of months, but then they kept, and in the summer between my graduation and the time I went in the Navy, I had taken civil service exam. So, I. Uh, they discharged us from the Navy, but then they were allowed, those who had been in were allowed to take a civil service exam when I'd already passed that. So then that we were in as civil, under civil service until about the, the following June or July, somewhere like that, before mm -hmm. they finally 
did away with them, but not necessary. So you were then in... I was in just about a year. I see. Uh, and that was uh, all time spent here in Newport, was it? Oh, yes, because they didn't go. They didn't, except for the nurses, they didn't go to see you or anything. Mm -hmm. This was holy clerical positions. Mm -hmm. I see. But they did, uh, we did wear a uniform, had a cape that was way, way down to here, mm -hmm. all five foot of me. <laughs> 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 well, where did you work then? I worked in in the war college, but it mm -hmm. was an it was an officer's person now. I see. And uh, they, what had was Cloyne School? You know where I mean? Just it was the building is gone now. But as you go around the curve to go over the bridge to coast of Harbor Island, mm -hmm. yes. on your right was a boys' school, a big oh. boys building. A, it was a school, lights and judges. Mm -hmm. and they, the boys wore eating jackets and long pants and little high hats. And they went to, when they went to, when they went, came marching down Third Street um, to go to Trinity Church. Oh. And this was the outfit that they wore. Uh -huh. Well, then in 1918, the government took over the building. 1970, perhaps, yeah. and uh, they put young officers in there, and uh, made they had courses and so forth. Mm -hmm. and they, oh, I see. Uh, the office that I was in at the War College, War College, of course, was not uh, in session during the war, uh, but they had business offices in there and so forth. In that, in the first building, mm -hmm. and uh, we made we we would type out these young boys would be made ensigns and so forth and type out their papers and all that I kind see, of thing. I see. And now where were you living then at, at that time? I was living at uh, the corner of 3rd and Elm. You I know see. that house there? Yeah. Right, not Nesbitt's is on this corner, this is a colonial one on the other corner that somebody's just built a whole addition in the back, you know what I mean? Yes, uh, yes. I, I think so. Those there now. I see. Um, so how did you travel then uh, to and oh, from well, work? Actually, you walked most of the time. That wasn't far. But there was electric cars, you know, a little tunnel or trolley thing that went from Washington Square over the Walnut Street Bridge and, and out to... Um, will we bother you? Uh, no, but am I intruding if I... If you're on the tape, that's all. <laughs> I just need to have a waiver from you. Oh. No, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, so you took the trolley sometimes? We took the but little trolley mm -hmm. out. Then, of course, at noontime, lots of times, we took the little ferry boat that went from the training station, which is close to South Island, mm -hmm. down to Government Landing, and then go around, around town for doing a lunch hour and, and go back again. Oh, I see. I see. Now, were you aware of uh, other people in the point then who uh, worked in the war effort or perhaps changed their jobs, say, uh, well, for the war? Good, they, a good many of the girls went into the service, mm -hmm. you know, and had been in the course longer than I because uh, I didn't graduate from high school until June, but others had gone in earlier. Yes, and, and you, you knew some of them? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, did you join perhaps because of um, the experience you'd had with some of these other girls who uh, had already done? I don't done? think so. I think this was the thing to do right uh -huh. there, <laughs> if you could get in it. Uh -huh. If you could get in now, was there a... Well, I mean, in other words, because I had taken a clerical, I had taken a business course in high school. Oh, I see. I see. You meant if you could get in to well, a particular... I mean, being that, well, because it was mostly typing and stenography, you see, that, uh, or a booking part of it. It was mostly... Uh, that kind of a thing that the people, that women yes. went in at that time. I see. But the men, though, um, were taken far more oh. routinely. Is that oh, that was a different thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just talking from the women's uh -huh. point of view. Uh -huh. Do you have any idea how many uh, women were in the military here in Newport? Oh, yes. I, I don't have a number, but I have a picture home that says a lot. Because a great many people. Cindy, we on the break. The, uh, were there any changes in the neighborhood, perhaps in the activity or in the social aspect, uh, or perhaps in the, the number and kind of neighbors because of the war? 
Well, I think there were a good many people who hired rooms, who came, you know, and hired mm -hmm. rooms. But as far as the actual neighborhood, no, because most of the people had lived there for years and continued to live there for years. I see. Were you aware uh, of any of Red Cross activities in Newport? Well, of course, there was a great deal going on, and uh, people at home did a lot of knitting and so forth. Mm -hmm. How about Liberty Bonds? Were there bond drives here in Newport? Oh, yes, there was all those kind of things, yeah. yeah. Do you know anything of the uh, activities at the torpedo station? Were you ever involved in that or aware of that in any way? There were many there, and of course that was, that was the time when they had the big explosion, I think. Oh, was that right? Yeah, many were some maimed and killed. I'm not sure just the date of that. I had a cousin who worked over there, in the, a woman who worked over in the munitions mm -hmm. and. Um, they, you see them, the boats coming in to the government land and they just scream mm. to attempt to see. It's hard for you to realize where the government land was and where the treadway is. Started. Yes. Well, I've seen some uh, some photos of it. Yeah. It was a, was a really it was a big, beautiful little spot, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Hmm. Um, well, let's see. How about the Fall River Line? Well, I'm afraid I, uh, the, my recollection is mostly the four rubber mine of watching boats come down at night and, and seeing the lights and so forth. And then we used to go down uh, to the end of Long Wharf and see them come in, see them embark. Mm -hmm. Personally, I never was on them. Oh, is that right? <laughs> you might have been one of the few people in Newport. <laughs> I guess so. No, I never was on them. It was um, something of a social event, though, I understand, too. Uh, watch the boats come and go. Oh, well, in the summertime, and you'd be, I told you about the band concerts. Yes. The other one, and as you'd be there on the park at, at Battery Park, Fort Green, whatever, uh, they'd come down, you know, and of course the, the harbor, the uh, battleships were out there with their, with their searchlights and mm -hmm. so forth, and then the boat would come down all ablaze and swing down uh -huh. and land it. Must have, must have been beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah do you, did you know uh, many people who uh, traveled on the Fall River Line? Well, I said you say most everybody did, so it wouldn't be a question of knowing people. It, you were just aware of it. That it went down, and of course there was a bridal suite that they had that people who were just married went on their honeymoon and that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Did you know of many people in the neighborhood who worked in the shops? Oh yes, well, I, the people, the children I played with, lots of their parents worked in the shop. Mm -hmm. Not the father, not the mother. The yes. Mother. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, uh, many of your friends' fathers did work oh, in yes. the shop. Did you know, when you were young, were you aware of, of uh, what type of work they did? I don't know. It would just be that they worked there. I don't know. Yeah. Because of course, they did all kinds of things. They, they did the mattresses over. They did furniture over. And then, of course, there was all the boiler makers shop where they repaired the, the mm -hmm. things. But when you were young, that wasn't uh, uh, it, something you no, really knew. No, it wasn't because, of course, my father didn't. Mm -hmm. And uh, But I just knew that these people's fathers worked there, but you didn't know what kind of, didn't get into what kind of work they did. <laughs> Did you have any idea of uh, uh, how their jobs rated, say, on the, the social scale of all sorts of occupations in Newport? Was there any uh, well, I can't about that? say that at my stage that, that you know, people mm -hmm. lived there, you worked with them, their father went off to work, that was it. What they did didn't make much difference to a job. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When the uh, Fall River Line um, Closed so suddenly. Uh, was that a? Uh, did that have quite an impact on, on Newport as far as you were concerned personally? No, I can't say that it did. Mm -hmm. Not as far as I was concerned. Mm -hmm. Because there was nobody in my family that that worked there. Yeah. Did you know people who were then uh, put out of work suddenly? I suppose I did, but it, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. 
you uh, talked a little bit before, I think, about the, the depression. And uh, apparently it really, uh, as far as you were concerned at least, didn't well, really have much of no, an impact. No, it didn't have any, well, I did, we didn't own stocks and that kind of thing. And uh, because, as I said, my husband was in the service and my father worked for the city, so that it didn't really affect us as much as it did. Um, from what I understand from uh, some other people, that Newport in general did not suffer from the Depression nearly as much as no, I do, I, I people have no often might imagine. You know, you'd read in the paper about all these mines in New York and people selling apples and all that. There was nothing like that in Newport. Uh -huh. I know. Uh -huh. The uh, stock market crash in 29, was that a... Uh, well, that's as, the Depression, that's the stock market. Yes. But was that a, um, a very uh, important event at the time? Was it something that... Uh, oh, I think, of course, it was in all the papers and it mm -hmm. was all this, but as I say, I can't feel it personally uh, affected me. Right, yeah. I was just... I had been married... Well, I was married in June, July of 28. My son was born in August of 29. That's right at that period, but mm -hmm. as I say, Peter was in the was in the Navy. My father worked for the school department, so those were the jobs right, that you weren't affected by. Yes, yes. And of course, I lived always because Peter was off in the Navy. I lived with my mother and father, mm -hmm. so that uh, there wasn't any really financial thing to us, uh -huh. except of course things were hard all over the country, I understand that, but it didn't affect us personally as far as losing money in the stock market and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The uh, Civic Employment Association, do you know anything about that? No. Okay. Were you aware of uh, the effects of the various federal programs that were intended to uh, decrease the uh, effect of the depression? Well, I know it was WPA and all that kind of mm -hmm. thing. I can't say that it affected me, no. Well, in fact, I, it, still, I still see WPA oh, they plaques did, oh, on the sidewalks. Oh, they did kind of things. Now I understand here at the society, which of course was years before I was ever here, they had the they had people working, they cataloged our early records, mm. and they had up in the third floor, they set up a, like a, a print shop, and, and uh, they did a lot of different things like that mm. right here in the building. Yeah, yeah. Were you aware of uh, these various construction projects, the sidewalks, and some of the piers well, on, of course uh, we knew around? Well, going on, uh -huh. certainly. Mm. And uh, did you know of any of your neighbors, say, who were uh, involved in these projects, who were had some work because of them. Well, by this time, you see, I'm living over on on Child Street, right where I am now, mm -hmm. and it did just well, it was a small neighborhood there. I mean, you don't have to, but I don't think it involved too many people right around there. Uh -huh. The uh, the era of prohibition. Yeah, well, of course, Newport, Newport had some wild times <laughs> prohibition. Um, because of its uh, access to the sea, you mean? Oh, because of the rum running. Oh, yes. yes, there was definitely all this rum running, and, and there was at least one murder. The boy was found out near the railroad tracks, and all that was always attributed to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that such things were, were common knowledge, but now were you ever uh, involved, well not involved, but were you, did you ever experience any um, anything because of this rum running? No, except things that were rumored all the time that you heard, you knew this right. thing was going on, of course. But you didn't have any personal no, experience no. In, in any way. Do you know of any speakeasies that were in, uh, in Newport? Oh, I'm sure there were plenty, but I don't know. No. Uh -huh. The, uh, I know that um, well, the whole island and uh, the Sakonet River area were um, 
used as landings for. Oh yeah, this, this run running was very definite all up through the bay and all around, but it was just something you heard mm -hmm. people talking about, but you know. How were the uh, uh, the rum runners regarded? Were they regarded as criminals or I or otherwise? I, I really, well, I couldn't say. I think the uh, majority of the people would say yes, they, but I think nobody would tell them. Mm -hmm. Was there, well, do you know if uh, uh, bribery and corruption and whatnot were uh, rampant or I'm existent? sure they were, but uh, I, as I say again, I wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't a, where you knew these things except you'd hear these things yeah. said and some boats and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, this was um, mostly during the 20s. Uh, where were you working then? In the 20s, I, I went to St. George's about 19, 1920, and I worked over, which kept me away from the town a good deal. That was located out in Middletown at that time then? Is, oh yeah. yes, they went out there well, early around 1900, 1902. Mm -hmm. And you see, um, I went up to, I walked to Sherman Street each day where Miss Sheldon, who was, my, who was the registrar, my particular boss. Uh -huh. And then they sent a taxi oh, there. Yeah. And so we drove out, say, 9 o'clock in the morning. We didn't come back until we got to work at 5. So that kept me out of the town a good oh, deal. Oh, I see, see, yes. So you didn't really have so much contact no. then with the town. And then I was the out there. The town. I was out there until I was married. I, went, I was out there till I was, I was married in July of 28. And then my son was coming the next year, and I left the spring of 29. So there's nine years there, practically, eight, nine mm -hmm. years, that I had not too much contact in town, only only when I was in yeah. the evenings. Yeah, and that, that was the bulk of the yeah. uh, prohibition yes. years. I see. Um, well, do you remember um, <clears throat> what Newport was like then immediately after repeal of prohibition? I can't say that I do. I mean, uh -huh. to begin with, my grandfather was a Baptist minister. I was brought up in a family that you never saw anything to drink. Mm -hmm. So the question of whether you could drink or whether you couldn't drink didn't affect my family because yeah. we just didn't use it. Uh -huh. I see. The next topic seems to be the hurricane of 38. Well, that's an episode two. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing I remember most was my youngest, my youngest child was just starting kindergarten over at Calendar School. And the afternoon of that hurricane, my friend Carrie Orney and I, we went downtown and she bought a new pair of shoes and put them on. And uh, as we went past one of the shops, this piece of glass, it was like a glass black siding fell, but we didn't think anything. Nobody, we, you didn't have any warnings yes. of hurricanes. And we went over to West Dogs, which is where the rum line is now. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we sat there and had ice cream. An hour later, the water was gone right through there. <laughs> and we went up to get Mamie at them. She was me, we called her Mary Lou then went up to get her at calendar school and as we went up Papa Street the rain started and Carrie's new shoes were ruined just going from there to get into my house. Oh. And we, my, uh, my back window, the back bedroom windows look out over Corobalas' shoe place, uh -huh. 10th Street, and the boats were going right up, right up 10th Street. Is that right? The water came up to the door of the opera house. Just, they say it's not a tidal wave now. Well, it was as near a tidal wave as I want to get. <laughs> My husband at that time was working up at Gould Island, and he managed to get a call through saying that he wasn't coming down because the water was then was 15 foot over the ferry land in it. So he stayed the night at Gould Island. But we were watching him go right up the boat, sort of Tennessee, and way along the corner of Marlboro and West 
West Marble and Thames, yes. where there's the IRS thing. There was a big fruit market there with big plate, plate glass windows, and the force of the wind and the water just blew those in, and the fruit was going bobbing right up. My goodness. And we kept, we, of course, it was coming right up in the back of us. But at 6 o'clock, the tide turned, mm -hmm. and it didn't come any nearer. Mm -hmm. And that evening, my father went out after, because all the lights were gone. Mm -hmm. And he stepped into a manhole. Fortunately, only one leg went in, because the manhole covers had all come up, of course. He could have gone right down in, and we would never know where it went. Would have been awful. And of course, we had no uh, no electricity for a long time. And well, uh, for uh, uh, days, you mean? Yeah, uh -huh. quite long. And of course, the '54 hurricane was a long time before they got electricity. Hmm. Yeah. Now, how about what time was it when you realized that this was more than just a, a big well, storm? Well, as I say, it started about. Uh, it must have. It only went for a couple of hours, but it was. If you've ever seen some of the things, the pictures of Sid, because it went right through Allen Park, many houses, many yes. people were drowned there, and over to the beach, people were drowned. It came right through. So, and of course, the trees, you see, it was early September, no, 1820s, and the trees were still in full leaf, and this torrential rain just loosened it, the roots and the trees, just, the weight of it. Just took them right over and you see the roots. Oh, um, there must have been many of them. Oh, we lost many trees. beautiful trees. Yes. Goodness. <clears throat> uh, what sort of uh, activities were involved in the cleanup? Was there a, a, a general volunteer well, uh, effort? I don't really remember to tell you the truth, but I know people that all lived in the point section had all to go and have typhoid shots because. You see, it, it opened up all the sewers, all the things. Mm -hmm. People people went out and took some of that fruit and had got typhoid fever. They didn't oh. realize, you know, like grapefruit and all, you wouldn't think, but the the germ the, had gone right through the skin, mm -hmm. evidently, because people with typhoid fever were leaving it. Hmm. Was, were there many cases, or was it mostly a matter of prevention? Well, I, I think it was more a matter of prevention, but there were some cases, I know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you said the electricity was out for uh, oh, some few days. Oh, time, yeah. Now, how about um, uh, drinking water? Was that affected? Well, I can't remember that the drinking water was affected. I know it seems to me we did boil water for a while. Uh -huh. Were there many people killed in town? Here Not Port? right in town, but on, as I say, the other beaches, and of course it went right through Island Park. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as in town, no, it yes. was where the low-lying areas where the water came right in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. About how many uh, days or weeks do you think it was until everything was fully back to normal? Oh, I don't know. It took a good while to get everything cleaned up. Mm -hmm. but I. I couldn't tell you just how. Yeah. The, uh, um, it's a little harder for me to imagine no warning of the hurricane because we're Well, we get, warnings, we get warnings. We get warnings when the wave started down. Yes, we were warned of everything. This, this, this just, I say, we went downtown in the afternoon, the wind was blowing, and, uh, but you didn't think anything of it. And of course, before that, We've all we always have September storms that my father always referred to as September gales. You never heard about a hurricane. Mm -hmm. But if you look back in eighteen fifteen we had one that came just the same places. Came right back uh -huh. and this is why I say all this building down Long Walk and all that, if we have one it'll oh, go yeah. right through there. Yeah. It comes right back to what has been evidently the original boundaries of the marshes and so forth. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, yes, I see what you mean. So at least in your lifetime, though, before the 38 hurricane, you had no, the No, we had September gales, which mm -hmm. were bad storms, but not this. But in 1815, and it's all descriptions in mm -hmm. the Newport Mercury now, and it came to the same place in Providence, and it came up the same idea as here. People were killed right down Long Walk, you see, the, the water came right in. And in 1815, they lost them there, too. 
were you aware of any uh, changes uh, due to the hurricane, perhaps buildings that were not rebuilt, or people who, uh, who moved away, or uh, some things like that? Uh, of course, um, I think they pretty well, we didn't actually lose too many buildings in that sense, uh, that I remember the water went through them, but you know, and then they would be restored afterwards. I say, where, where the rum mine is? West Dawes Ice Cream Parlor, where people came from all over that was yes, homemade sir. ice cream. Yes. And even in my father, when my father was a child, they made ice cream there. And he'd tell about the before election day, they all the boys in the neighborhood, because it was all done by hand with big wooden paddles at that time, and they'd make this all ahead. So that was, well, that was a Newport tradition, was to go to West Dawes Ice Cream Parlor. Well, they never opened the park, right? The West Dawes Ice Cream Green power again oh. over there. That was never opened After. up again. Oh. But the building, because it's been used over the years mm -hmm. for Tony's pub and all this in recent years, and now the rum line. Oh. So yeah, I've heard of West Dolls before yeah. from yeah. other people, and oh. that was put out of business now. Oh, that was put because out of business completely. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, it's I say it went right through there, mm -hmm. yeah. and Mrs. West Dolls, the mother, was an older woman, and and one of her sons. Man, it with them, and they just never opened it up again. Mm -hmm. I, hmm. Well, do you know of any other businesses that uh, were put out of business because of the hurricane? I I really don't know because that one was personal to me. Yes, yes. <laughs> because I'd been there that afternoon, and then of course I think I told you I did work there when summer when I was in high school. We worked we went to work at nine o'clock in the morning, and worked till ten at night, and you got four dollars a week. I had one afternoon, one evening in a week off, and a dish of ice cream at ten o'clock. <laughs> um, were there other uh, interesting or dramatic stories? Uh, oh, I suppose there were many of them, yes. I got to the next day before my husband got home. And, um, I can still see that water going right up to empty because you couldn't believe that it could come so quickly and go so far, you see. Yes. It, it, right. I'm trying to think when school got over, but I expect school could open a little after three. Mm -hmm. So that's about when it really started. And it's turned at six, but between that time, mm -hmm. all of that damage and all of the, that water, because it just pushed right in, the wind evidently. That's why they say now it wasn't a uh, tidal wave. It was just the wind pushing the water. Though. Yes. That's as near tidal wave as I want to come. I can imagine. <laughs> because like with the 54 hurricane, it came up, but not as far by any means. It came up through the brick market though, because in the 54 hurricane, my son was in charge of Chamber of Commerce, which was in there, and, and my younger daughter was working in there, and they they were up to their knees in the water before they came, got out of there, mm -hmm. came out of the windows. Goodness. Well, I'd like to know about World War II in Newport. Well, World War II, I, I was busy raising my family. My husband was out of the service. He'd had a medical discharge. Mm -hmm. And he worked up at the torpedo station. And uh, of course, my, my children were not the age to be. I only had one son. He was about 14. He did work after school over the top end station. He had like a, a, what do you call it? You go around with a cart sort of sandwiches and that oh, kind of yes, thing. Oh, uh, yes, yes. I don't know what they called it, but mm -hmm. he had this little job after after school. Mm -hmm. And now the, tor with the torpedo station uh, was on 24-hour-a-day? Oh, they, they, they had they were. And, and what did your husband do? My husband, Peter was up in the boiler thing, way up on the island. The, well, I forget what they call it, but he worked with the boilers and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, and this again then was a time of uh, influx of people oh, to Newport? Of course, Newport. the town was, was loaded with people then, yes. People, of course, the, that, that station was. was Loaded people, and they also worked. As I said, he was uh, Peter. 
people except they had things at Gould Island and so forth, mm-hmm. and um, they had the other ferry that went at the west of Port Park, as you know, the government had, right about there, the government had a ferry that ran from there to the north end of the station, so mm-hmm. people who did not have to go down to the uh-huh. government land. Uh-huh. Now, was it, uh, again, a, a sudden influx of uh, people and activity? As I suppose it was building up ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Peter had been there before the war, you see, he'd been, so I didn't, but I mean, I think it was, uh, that was more, I think people saw that coming more. Yeah. We were planning more for it than we did the First World War. Uh-huh. Because in the First World War, it had gone on since 1914, we had this business neutrality business. It wasn't until they uh, did the Lusitania and so forth, I think, that that uh, we went in, mm. and of course, I can still remember Peter sitting in the, we was, he was sitting in the living room when that, the thing came over about 2 o'clock or mm-hmm. something. Yes, yes. Was your family disrupted at all by the, uh, the, acti- the activities in Newport? No, as I say, Peter had been working at the station mm-hmm. anyway, it was just continued work. My father was still working for the school department, and my dad was only 14. He wasn't old enough to be sent to anybody. Hmm. Uh, on the point again, uh, did people again take in borders? Oh, I think so. Of course, I, I still... I, now they say that where I live is on the point, but as far as I was a child, that was not the point. Right. The point kind of ended right down the middle of 10th Street. Yes, I, I know and what you of mean. Because um, by this time, as I say, I'm not raising my family and busy in that angle. I didn't I didn't start to work until 1946. Mm-hmm. My children were all yeah. fairly well grown. Were there people from, or Newporters, who, uh, who joined up Second to, World. yeah, Second World War, um, in the Army, or perhaps uh, took on uh, other war-related jobs here in town? Well, I'm sure they did. They were very active. The Red Cross was active, and, and uh, all that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you, you weren't personally aware of no, particularly I, I, great I number remember, of people. I remember before we actually went into the Second World War that we went up and uh, they had a place up on Bellevue Avenue for bundles for Britain and you went up and they gave you uh, the material and you knitted socks and, and in fact my friend used to knit those high ones that before people in the submarines came all the way, oh. went inside the big boots and all. And uh, they would give you the whole, this, this was right up in one of the casino shops, and they would furnish the material and the instructions and the people in town. Did, this mm-hmm. was, as I said before, this was bundles for Britain. This yes. was before we were even in the, in the war. Uh-huh. Um, the Red Cross was very active, you said. Oh, yes. Uh, what types of things? Uh, well, the Red Cross, done? they had um, the people along the drive. They, they gave use of their limousines for ambulances and, you know, they organized all this in case, in case, because we were a place that could well have been attacked with yes. the public station. So this was, this was wholly uh, defense things, not, not that we had to use it, but mm-hmm. they, they built up this, this defense business that would be all trained if, if, if we did get bombed. Mm-hmm. Was there a, a an apprehension around well, town about see, that? A German submarine came right in here a couple of days just before, the, just a short time before he went to war, came right in here. Mm-hmm. I can imagine they that could not have people, because that uh, that was the place, and the because we had the naval, all the naval things, but also that this was the place where they were really making stuff. You see, yes. it could well have been that we would we would be in line. Uh huh. Yes. Hmm. Were you aware of um, some any of your uh, friends or neighbors who did volunteer work for the USO or the Red Cross or 
our organization. Oh yes, I'm sure they all did. I, I uh, except for knitting, I don't remember that I did. I, oh, I was a block leader. <laughs> what was that? Well, this was an organized thing that, um, very vague in my mind now, but the section they gave me was all off the West Broadway too. But we, uh, we all, uh, this was a connection with, in the beginning with PGA, we had every child. They do the fingerprints now. We had them all fingerprinted with a thing now, in case in case we were invaded and anything should happen to the children. Oh, I had never known of that. And that was done to the PTA. They were all they were all fingerprinted. And uh, this block leader business, as I say, we right up here at what is now Engine Five was the uh, quarters for the civilian defense and the block leaders came under civilian defense mm -hmm. and each one was assigned a certain section and we had meetings in which they would plan things that, you know that could be done if something happened mm -hmm. and these the women would be in this was wholly a women thing I see. At that, that I was in yes. that the women would how they would do supplies and how they would cook and at different places now, if. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, all yeah. of those, so you were responsible for all those activities in a for a particular section. geographic yeah. area? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and how many blocks was that, do you remember? Mm -hmm. I can't tell you now, but as I say, it was all up to the West Broadway the section. Mm -hmm. Not too many, there were enough volunteers that each one had a, mm -hmm. had, um, a section. Now, was this... Um, and it was done mostly, the meetings and all were held like in the school buildings, if I remember. And then these were just plans made. It was wholly for civilian defense. Yes. And now, was this instituted after Pearl Harbor? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. So this wasn't in... Oh, no, no, this was not ahead. This was after we were actually in the war. Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> Were there uh, other security measures uh, that oh, yeah, of course were instituted here in town? Oh, yes, they... Were there blackouts? There were blackouts and huh. all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. I hadn't realized that. And that was well, because, because, was... because, you see, we're right on the coast, and because of the torpedo station, yes. even though, of course, we also had all the different naval installations that were active at that time. Mm -hmm. So this was really quite a... a Quite a target, wasn't it? Well, it could be. You see, all they needed was one good direct line at, at the torpedo station, and you had, because a lot of the powder that was kept up at Rose Island. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Um, were you aware of any of the activities around Brenton Point, the uh, defense activities? And, and, uh, I some suppose of the... I was at the time, I, I was not involved, in, you know. Mm -hmm. So your your um, war activity is primarily centered around the, uh, the block was, leader yeah, and and the civilian and, defense. Thing. Mm -hmm. And you said that you did some knitting as well. Well, that this yeah. was in the beginnings when actually we weren't in it. Yes. But this was because I think we always our sentiment was for for England, mm -hmm. even though we were supposed to be neutral at the beginning. And so these bundles for Britain was was um, things that were sent over to the, well, I guess they were in France there or wherever they were sent. But people did this, but this was before we actually went into the war. Yeah. And my only real kind of And how long were you a block leader? 
Well, maybe we'll pop later on two more with those. Oh, so there was for the yeah. duration then? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you just how long we, just when it was first organized, because they started the Civilian Defense. Actually, John Nicholas Brown was the head of it when it first started. And then, then I think when it was up here, it was John Barry Ryan and his wife were very much in, in charge. Mm -hmm. How about uh, the end of the war? I suppose there were celebrations here in Newport? Oh, yes, because I can remember the first Armistice Day. My father and I got up and this is First World War, and uh, went down to Washington Square at 5 o'clock in the morning and everybody was there singing and shouting. Uh -huh. Then they had a big parade. And uh, during the, at the end of the Second World at the War? End of the Second World War. I don't seem to remember as much as I did the first World War, mm -hmm. but of course that was grand rejoicing when it was gone. Mm -hmm. But of course, you see, that was more of a gradual thing in the fact that the, the, the European angle ended before the Japanese. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it, it kind of, it wasn't the, when the first World War, it was that, because it had a week before they had said it was, and then it was wasn't finalized till the eleventh of November. But that was it in the sense. But yes. the, the Second World War there were kind of two, you know, there was mm -hmm. VJ Day and there was D Day. They, it wasn't an end at once as, yes. as the other was. Mm -hmm. Um were you aware or did you know any servicemen who from Newport or perhaps who had come through Newport who were well, my cousin, back. one of my cousins, her husband was lost in D-Day, mm -hmm. and uh, he was only 34. Uh -huh. He was yeah. lost in the, in the invasion. Uh -huh. um, but you weren't aware then of, of very many? Uh, oh, of course, there were a good many Newporters lost over the, over the whole period. Mm -hmm. I see. Hmm. How about the America's Cup races? Well, I'm afraid that they just were not my valuable. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, the ferry, Jamestown Ferry, mm -hmm. and the Newport Bridge is another uh, another topic. Uh, did you uh, ride the ferry? Oh, of course, we always rode the ferries, and because uh, you could go on, actually, you know. You could go on and pay your 15 cents, and if you never went off, you could ride back and forth and back oh, and really? forth. And, and uh, of course, the uh, ferry, we, when I was a child, we went by ferry from here to, to Jamestown, and then went across Jamestown and took the other ferry to Sanderstown. Mm -hmm. And the hill then was like this on the Sanderstown side. Yeah. We walked up to the top of the hill and waited, and then got the electric car because my father's people came from Wakefield. Oh, I see. Which is just, you know. Yes. And the electric cars would come down from Providence and you'd take an electric car right at the top of Sandstown Hill to Wakefield. Oh. Now, did the ferry land anywhere near where the uh, present uh, uh, Jamestown Bridge is located? I don't know. The ferry landing, don't you know where the ferry landing is? Where there's little shops and, and the, the big hotel and all that's well. No, I'm sorry, on the Saunders Town oh, side. Oh, on the Saunders Town side. Saunders Town side landed at the foot of this hill. There was nothing there, as I remember, but just the landing. I think mm. you can still see over there on the Saunders Town mm. side uh, where that landing mm. was, but it wasn't any, wasn't built up like the Jamestown, the Jamestown landing. Yes. They had built up, you know, the little shops along mm. there and the kind of the front street of the town was, was right there. Yes. Yes, okay, I see. Um, now, did you take the ferry uh, uh, just recreationally, say? Oh, yes, that was it. Well, the, my father would take me over to Wakefield to my, visit my great aunt. In fact, I spent several summers, two or three weeks over there with her. He, mm -hmm. They'd take me over, and well, my mother and father would take me over, and then they would come home. You know, yeah. Well, I, I, I meant also just perhaps to enjoy the ferry ride. Or oh, well, yes, we did that uh -huh. later when we were old enough to do it on our own, just riding back and forth. And of course, when the bridge was going to be open, with the, the day, the last day of the ferry, there was a big 
You don't, um, you didn't remember Phil Arnold? Uh, I, I know, I know of him. I don't know. No, Phil ever, was the uh, wife. Harold oh, was right. Yes, that's right, that's yeah. right. She was Philippina. Yes, that's well, right. The day, the last, I think it was the last day, or one of the last days anyway, she organized the thing and everybody I've heard about went, that. went on the, the ferry and had the last ferry ride. <laughs> and of course it was so much prettier than going over the bridge, really. Yes, yes. Um, I uh, heard from one person that the favorite thing to do uh, very often was to take the ferry ride to Jamestown and watch uh, the movie in the James at the Jamestown Theater and come back. Oh, well, I don't think I ever did that. Uh, but we would go over, just go over for the ride. Mm -hmm. and then, of course, when my children were bigger and they went to Boy Scout camp and Girl Scout camp, my recollection of that is you take you take them go to the ferry and take them over to to uh, Yarbrook. They still go. Yes. They're on there this week. And then, then we had come back, and by the time you got back, the, the line, because the ferries only took just so many cars, mm -hmm. and you sit there on that shore in the hot summer sun for an hour, an hour and a half, maybe more, waiting for a boat to take you over. Yes, well, that's uh, the other side of the coin of this ferry, yes, isn't yes, it? Yes. Uh, that waiting in line. Waiting here. in line over there. Sunday and summer afternoons, I can well remember we'd sit there and wait and wait because every, um, I, I don't know just how many, would, maybe the boat would take 24 cars. I don't remember how many they would take. And of course the boats ran every half hour, but you had to wait. One was going, one was coming back. Mm -hmm. And it would be a long time sometimes sitting there in the sun. Yeah. Well, the, the bridge then certainly is Oh, the bridge is much better. It's more efficient, though, yes. Yeah, it's just not But as, we just uh, did miss the ferry because the ferry was, a, as I say, it only cost about 15 cents. Mm -hmm. And you could go down and you could go on the ferry. You bought, you, you paid on the, either side of the ferry. Mm -hmm. But after you were on, nobody, you could stay on, you could go back and talk. <laughs> Was there uh, controversy and argument about the uh, the location of this side of the Newport Bridge oh, I being think there was a good on deal the deal. point? Mm -hmm. as, uh, I think there was a good deal. I, I don't really remember it too vividly, but I'm sure the point was to where it was going to land and so forth. Was there much opposition to the uh, to the bridge uh, itself, uh, the concept of a bridge? I I really can't remember. I I don't think so because of course, <coughs> except for the fact that people love the ferry, uh -huh. it certainly was much shorter, much more efficient, <coughs> and of course, opened us up again. Uh -huh. <coughs> now the uh, the bridge, the Jamestown Bridge. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm the drink. Okay. The Jamestown Bridge was a little early position here was because the Jamestown Bridge, of course, needed a bottleneck until you did get the other one. Yes, yes. Um, <clears throat> do you remember how long the uh, actual construction of the bridge took? No, I don't. You live through these things and you just don't <laughs> think about them. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Were there ceremonies marking the opening of the bridge? Oh, I'm sure there were. Mm -hmm. Now I understand that uh, some number of uh, construction men died during the construction of the bridge. Was that uh, something that, that uh, you were aware of? I suppose I was aware at the time. Mm -hmm. hmm. Of course I think that the biggest impact on the island in the first place was the opening of the Montauk Bridge. That was, that was a big... Oh, that that, right? You see that was really the because we had always a, we had a wooden drawbridge, you know, going over. Uh, yes, uh, to Tiverton. To Tiverton. Mm -hmm. But otherwise than that, we were an island. We're no longer an island with all these bridges. Yeah. Uh, and now, when uh, when did the Mount Hope Bridge open? And that opened in around 1930 or somewhere around mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And that uh, that did have an impact on the island. Oh, of course, that had the big impact on the island because you see then there was a direct route to that Providence. Was, yeah. Before that there was just a little ferry went over to Bristol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Right. And across the other, you went the Fall River Way from the Stone Bridge. Mm -hmm. Now, when was the Stone Bridge removed? Oh, when, well, they, or, when they built this new bridge thing, but I can't tell you the exact yeah. date. But, but, it, but it was removed uh, once the uh, the Braga Bridge was... Uh, you know, Braga no, that's not the Braga Bridge. That's right. It has nothing to do with this. That's right. That. You know, the Stone Bridge, the new bridge is what? A little farther yeah, up than over, the Stone right. Bridge. Yeah. Otherwise, than that, then that one, that one was a drawbridge, mm -hmm. and all the little boats went through. It had to had to come up, mm -hmm. and uh, you'd have to wait, but never very long because it wasn't that wide. But even little little boats were not too high mass; they'd have yes. to pull it up. Uh, yeah. And of course, there is a. I guess it be. No, but then there is a railroad bridge, you know, a little farther up. Mm -hmm. But of course, that was the only bridges off the island. Right. Otherwise, the only way you went off the island was by boat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any of the names of the ferry boats or the ferry boat captains? Well, of course, there was the captain, there was the uh, Governor Carr, because mm -hmm. he's one of my ancestors. And then there was the Hamilton, was it? Uh, oh, there were several. Mm -hmm. The Jamestown ones. I don't remember the names of the Sanders Town. Right. Yes, I was, was speaking of the, the Jamestown. Yeah. There mm -hmm. oh. <coughs> uh, well, that's the subject on the self is several bulletins and things that have been About the, the, the ferry boat. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Restoration and redevelopment is uh, is another topic. Oh, we got to get into that. I, I, I never had much to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, how about then the departure of the Navy fleet? That, well, uh, the, the town thought it was dead, but it came right to life again. Well, yes, that's that's right, it did. It would, now, how many years were were there between the act, well, I suppose the beginning of the uh, departure and when probably people decided that the town wouldn't die? Come well, your I guess I, I guess so. It was just, you see, after the First World War, the Navy thing went way down, mm -hmm. and then after the Second World War, but this was a total going all at once, you see. Yes, yes. Well, it was quite a jolt, I understand. Oh, we yeah. were here for a couple of years before that, but then left just uh, yeah. for that, during the time we were yeah. running it. Uh, of course it was, because the town was was a Navy town, was geared to a Navy town. Mm -hmm. But of course, you have to remember, the Navy still was here in the great existence, in, in the officer schools, in the, in the war college, in the various schools that they built up. The, uh, while we lost the fleet, yes, mm -hmm. but the Navy was still here and, and paid a lot of money into the town with, with things that are on the, on the uh, coast of Harbor and all the schools mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, were there many people, many Newporters, who lost their jobs? Oh, I suppose they did, yes, mm -hmm. because of course there were many clerical positions mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, did this affect, the, uh, affect your neighborhood? And, at all of which you were aware? No. Uh -huh. Not my neighborhood because my neighborhood isn't much of a neighborhood now. You know, I mean, the church is on one side, shops are in the front. There's not too many houses because the, that the housing project for the elderly that hasn't been there too long. Mm -hmm. yeah. When was that built? Not too long ago. Uh -huh. <laughs> Things that happen right near you, you forget, but it's not, it's not yeah. too far. Uh -huh. Do you feel that uh, that Newport is better off now because of the uh, uh, what eventually did happen uh, after the fleet departure? Well, I, I don't know about being better off. I I do think that. But many of the people that are here now are all down the Bowen Wharf and all that. That's all come in just because they, mm -hmm. and uh, I can't feel that they really care too much about Newport. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So the the uh, the uh, departure that didn't affect you uh, personally. Well, no, of course, Peter was dead, and uh, my son he was holding the baby toward army, and but he he went he was in Korea. He was wounded in Korea. He was uh, in the Army Reserve. He went, came out of URI as a second lieutenant, you know, and, and then uh, he, he came out of the service but stayed in the Army Reserve mm-hmm. for 25 years. Oh. So I had nobody personally mm-hmm. who had to leave here, or, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. Do you remember much about the uh, various uh, activities that were organized to uh, try to um, uh, repeal the decision to uh, pull out the fleet? You'd read things in the paper, but mm-hmm. personally, I knew nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think that. Uh, I think we had a nice long talk, don't you? Yes. And talked out. 